question maintains that balance. Uh, my call, Ian McKelvey. Thank you, Mr Chair. Give me uh, pleasure to take a short call on the uh, Reserve Bank uh, of New Zealand Monetary Policy Amendment Bill. And I want to comment on uh, one or two things before getting into a bit of detail on one or two uh, pieces of the bill. But, um, you know, if you think about uh, uh, life in my electorate, uh, for some time now, uh, or, or some years ago, for three or four years, in fact, every farmer in New Zealand was calling for changes to the Reserve uh, Bank Act and the way it operated. Uh, I can assure you none of them have been calling for that in the last three years because the world's changed. Right. But the point I'm making is that, that we go through cycles in life and we always seem to come back to the same spot. And the Minister just said a minute ago that, that uh, this bill's been in place since 1989 and the, and the world's not the same. But fortunately for us, the people running the Reserve Bank are not the same either. And, and so I think, that, um, I, I think that's an interesting point. But, but, and they, of course, bring themselves up to date pretty quickly. But we're opposing this bill. Um, not because um, we don't think change is appropriate, but because I think we are probably a little uncertain as to whether the changes proposed will in fact have a positive impact or not. And, and as I said in the, um, earlier tonight on a previous bill, the problem with changes like this is you don't really know the impact they're going to have, and I guess that's the excitement of life. But when you've got something that appears to be working pretty well, uh, I, think, I think perhaps changing those things uh, isn't always a sensible thing to do. And so. So whether, whether it makes sense for us to alter the, uh, the conditions under which the Reserve Bank Act, uh, acts or not will remain to be seen. Uh, and I guess the, the point the Minister just made as well was that in fact the people that are making the decisions in the form of a committee are very much the same people that would have been feeding into the information that arrived at those decisions anyway. So, so there wouldn't be a great deal of change there, it's just formalising a committee and of course making it accountable to the, to the Minister. I guess one of the fortunate things about that is that, um, that if, we're, um, if we're introducing Treasury to this equation, uh, the Government doesn't have a great track record of believing what Treasury tells them anyway. So, so, so we're probably half safe there. Um, uh, and so, so perhaps that informa the information that's fed into that committee won't necessarily um, make a great deal of difference. Now, there's one other thing I think is, is, an interesting, is interesting, and I'm not saying it, might, it would happen, but but if you think about the last uh, year or so, um, the security of the Reserve Bank decision-making process is very important. And, and I, I just hope that by extending uh, the number of people involved in this, and there's certainly no aspersion on the people involved, but nonetheless it's a very important issue, and I wouldn't mind the Minister answering a question or perhaps having a comment on that, because the security of the, of the Reserve Bank decision-making process is absolutely vital for New Zealand and for, its, for our future, uh, well, for the future of that decision-making process to have integrity. And I just hope that by extending the mandate and extending the number of people involved in this, that that has um, that um, impact and, and that, it, that it, in fact, uh, will retain its integrity as it moves forward. Now, the, the other thing, um, I, I don't know whether including employment in that and the Reserve Bank decision making uh, will, in fact, have an impact or not. We don't know the impact it will have on the eventual decision. We don't know whether the impact of introducing any other measure around uh, foreign exchange rates or whatever may have an impact on, on where the Reserve Bank gets to in, in the future. But what we do know is that aside from the fact I mentioned very earlier in, uh, in my uh, contribution tonight about the, about the fact that the sectors of our economy over the years that have always that have wanted to change the Reserve Bank Act and, and it's come back to where, they, uh, to where it was originally and they no longer require those changes, whether those changes uh, positive or not for the future. We don't really know that. So, Mr Chair, that's my uh, brief contribution, and I think the thing that uh, I've introduced, probably that no-one else has to date, is whether, in fact, having a large group of people involved in the decision-making process as, as opposed to where we're at at the moment will, in fact, impinge on the security of that decision-making process and whether um, it's, um, uh, you know, that integrity is going to be retained. Thank you, Mr Chair. Uh, the question is that the Minister's amendment